Research eventually showed that work on the temple was completed in 987 AD, 77 years after the downfall of the Tang Dynasty. Liang Sicheng had every reason to feel excited. He knew he was just one step away from a major discovery involving the legendary wooden buildings of Tang. But were there any Tang Dynasty wooden structures left in China? And if so, where were they? In early 1932, a young American arrived at the Chinese capital, Beijing. Approaching Peking by rail across the brown winter plain in 1932 still had the emotional impact it had had during the 500 years since the city walls were built. For Peking, until the 1960s, was the world's most populous walled city. John Fairbank, a doctoral student from Oxford University, had come in search of some documents recently released from the old Qing Dynasty Customs Office. At 25 years old, he'd recently shifted the focus of his academic research to China, and he wasn't yet sure that he had made the right decision. Before long, he was joined by his fiancée, Wilma, and the two married in an impressive traditional Beijing courtyard house. As a graduate in fine arts from a women's institute under Harvard University, Wilma developed a passion for Chinese painting. Academic work and Chinese language classes took up much of John Fairbank's time. So Wilma, accompanied by her younger sister Marion, who'd come for a visit, spent many hours exploring the old city of Beijing. I, I remember so well uh, that train trip. Before, and this was Chinese New Year, so everybody was so dressed up. And all the children had on these adorable uh, uh, padded, little padded coats that the boys did, and little, the, the, the little lion shoes. Remember the shoes that they had? And of course, the, all those hutongs in, in Peking, I don't know whether any of them are left, are they? I hope they're saving them. Well, I tell you, I remember it so well that uh, I first met uh, Liang Suchung and his wife. Uh, on a very, I remember it was a very cold January night. And I remember how charming, how, how warm and charming they were and friendly they were and, and how beautiful she was too. Some two months after our wedding, we met Liang Sichong and his wife, Lin Weiyin. Neither they nor we were aware that years of close friendship lay ahead, but we were captivated from the first. The year was 1932 when the two couples met for the first time. Wilma came from Boston and John Fairbank was studying at Oxford. Both these places were known to Liang Sichang and Lin Huiyin. Liang Sicheng gave each of the Americans a Chinese name, Fei Jiangqing for John Fairbank and Fei Weimei for Wilma. The same year, Lin Huiyin gave birth to their second child. In honor of Li Jie, the author of the ancient text Ying Zhao Fa Shi, the baby was named Jie. A year before, the couple had moved from the northeast into Beiping, where they rented a courtyard house in Beijing's eastern district. The house, though not large, had two lovely yards. 
Mum used to hold my hand while we walked slowly in the backyard where I marvelled at two huge trees and the white and purple clove flowers around them. The living room's glass window, with traditional latticework, faced south, big enough to let an ample sunshine to reach the depths of the room in winter. The plum tree by the window, small toys fashioned with clay, the sofa, and artworks on the wall, all of them Mum's favourites, were bathed in the balmy sunshine. As the eldest son in the family, Liang Sicheng, with his wife, took care of their younger brothers and sisters. The courtyard house became a meeting place for friends and relatives. My entry into the life of the household was regarded with suspicion by the mother and the servants. Despite these misgivings, my comings and goings were in time accepted. I often went over to the Liangs at the end of the day by bicycle or a rickshaw. I would walk through the inner garden to find way. Settled in a cozy corner of the living room with cups of hot tea, we hastened to relate the stories or thoughts we had been saving for each other. I did not once think that I could have a friend and a woman. It is my luck to have met you, because otherwise I may never know and enjoy this certain warm flow of feelings between two women. In the early 1930s, Liang Zicheng was among a group of scholars traveling the length and breadth of the country in search of buildings of great historical importance. The correspondence between him and his wife, Lin Huiying, gives a fascinating insight into the pride they both took in his work. But there were tremendous frustrations too. What were they? Find out in Episode 5 of Liang Zicheng and Lin Huiying.